So Ashes Dust leads to Downer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Or so that, yeah, so that, that, that ends, and then I'm not doing anything. And then I get a call from Aaron. And um, I'm I'm the one of the their Spinal Tap bass bass player replacements because they've gone through like a million bass players. I remember uh, that. At that time. And they yeah, had like yeah. weren't they sidelined for a bit because they just couldn't keep a bass player in the band kind kind of thing. I, I, I think they were for a little while. Um, we had uh, so I joined the band and they just put out or they released um, like an EP like four songs, and they gave that to me and I was like, yeah, this is cool, this is different, and obviously this was like. You know, around the, the, the 91 time, I think it was, somewhere around there, 92, 93, something. And um, I was really kind of getting into, like, Soundgarden and stuff like that. And it was just heavy and good. And I was like, this is cool, John Sounds. Um, it was like a evolution from the, the enemy, kind of, you know, saw on that. Um, and it was, it was cool, and I liked it. So I went in, I, I actually, um, I want to say... The bass player they had before that was an old roommate of mine, um, one of the nicest guys. Mark in the Mark Gonzalez, Rob yes. Rob Gonzalez, Rob Gonzalez, great guy, great 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 guy. guy, nicest guy in the world. Yeah, he played bass with them for a while, and um, and I remember, I don't know why he left, but he did. And then I remember my first practice, he actually showed up, and I was like, oh, maybe Mark's coming or Rob's coming back in the band, but. He just came because he knew me and he wanted to um, give me support and be like, hey, yeah, you know, this is you know, going to be a good thing. So I um, ended up playing with them that, and actually I take it back, it was a bass player between Rob because that guy recorded on the EP, different guy. He was only with him for a short period. And then they released that and then we would play a ton of shows. They already had management. They were kind of doing stuff. And so it was fun. You know, we play shows all the time in Hollywood, like everywhere. And um, I really didn't have much to do with any of that they would set it all up and um aaron was like the driving force of that band and uh and on the momentum of that then we recorded a record on igby's label ammunition and we did a full length record um and that was fun and I, that was great and i i thought that was i thought that was really good what we did it was like hard still and still with john's voice we that was record. wrestling with jesus and, yeah wrestling with jesus um, great name, by the way. Uh, I didn't come up with any of that. That was, I think, Aaron's thing, or Aaron John's thing. But um, we did that, and then we went on tour before that was released. So we did a tour with uh, Earth Crisis and Ignite. Um, and we started in Arizona. We played Wild Blues in Arizona and then went across the country and then went up the coast all the way up. And that was cool. That was fun. It was, um, the guys in Ignite were, I mean, I haven't seen them since that tour, but they were really fun, nice guys, um, awesome to hang out with. Um, Earth Crisis guys were okay, I guess, you know, <laughs> Carl's Carl, you know, um, <laughs> but, uh, it was, yeah, but it was cool because the last show we played was in Syracuse and CNN had showed up to do an interview with Earth Crisis and I guess that was their hometown. So they did a whole expose on them and that place I've never seen, like you only see videos of shows like that. Like that show was incredible. Like we played in there, we had a really good response. But when they took the stage, it was insane. Like, absolutely insane. And they were fun to watch every night because they were so, you know, into what they were doing. Yep. It, it, you couldn't not, you know, you could not go, this is not good. You know, they're doing their thing and it, it was a lot of energy and passion behind it. So I saw them um, so we did that about 10 years ago. It's interesting to just so you bring that up about Earth Crisis. And mm -hmm. like, like, I mean, I'm not vegan, I'm not vegetarian or anything, but you when you see them it is apparent like this isn't guys getting up and just running through the set like they are or at least carl they're committed and yeah. like oh yeah 100%. i have a lot of respect for that like wow after all this time yeah. you guys have not faltered and that's you know that's pretty damn awesome i, I remember i remember being at a, a venue in boston and spending three hours talking to carl about me not being straight edge anymore oh okay <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I was just like, uh, I get it. I mean, it's cool. You, you know, you want to, you know, what you believe in, and you back what you believe in, but you also have to remember other people have different opinions and beliefs too, you know, and that's... Uh, oh, so, wait, wait so you know. were... See, here's the thing. The little Steve that I've known... I'm, I'm sorry I keep calling you little Steve, but it's it, it's like... No, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's Listen, it, I'm, I'm barely 5'4". It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's... it's um. 
like I never knew you were straight edge. Like, like, like I'm, I'm still straight edge after, but, but it, but yeah. it's just, I was never one, like I was never in a straight edge band, but I never knew you. So mm. you were at one point like straight edge. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I was totally into it at the X's and the, and the whole, oh yeah, for sure. Like I was totally, totally into it. And, um, and I think I was until the scene started to take a weird turn. Like the scene became everything it was supposed to not be, mm. and that kind of bothered me. Like people getting really militant, and not that that made me lose my edge, but I just realized it's it's not about that. It's not you know like it it, it came up, you know you had to have the right shoes and the right camouflage pants and then the right haircut and the, and I was like this is this is everything I I I hated because like I always felt like a little different than everybody, right? And I found a group of people that were different than too, like. And then it started to evolve into this, and I was like, mm. and then I started listening to other music too. I just realized there's a lot of other music out there that was good too, and you know, and that's kind of yeah. And I respect it. I mean, it's cool. And like, I'm to be honest with you, you know, I don't drink anymore at all, you know. But it's not that I'm straight edge, you know. But it's just, you know, yeah. Do you ever think you'll do another band again? Because like, I know that you do stuff now, and I'm going to be using your stuff mm -hmm. in in my in my movies, like. I, I, I was talking yeah. with um, Isaac and uh, Mike Hartsfield recently, and I was like, hey, guys, like, Steve is, like, recording stuff, and it's really good. Like, I'm su like I'm surprised that – and Isaac, and I still need to do this, and I hope you don't mind. Isaac was like, hey, send me some of that because, you know, Isaac is like you, and Mike is too, but, like, Isaac is really one of those guys, like, still li – like, like, always looking for new music, always looking for, like, like he loves yeah. it. And so um, – yeah. Like, do you think you'll ever do it, or is it something that? I, no, no, I don't. I don't, I don't think I'd ever do another band. I, I love making music for what I do, um, and, and I play almost every day, and I record every day. Um, but it's just something I do for myself, you know. And and I, it, I'm, I don't even know. Like, I record it, and I like it when I'm doing it. And then, uh, it's not that good, you know. What I mean, I'm one of those kind of guys, so I just do it because I, I like to do it, and. Um, it keeps me busy. It's my, you know, some guys work on cars, some guys do it. I just, I collect guitars and I like to, to write music, you know, at some point, like I would like to start doing vocals on it and see where it goes at some point. But let's see. I think I've only done one song with vocals and yeah, so that's something I'll say, but it's, it's a, it's a learning process and I like the whole, like learning how to do it. And this is a compressor and this is what this does. And your stuff you know, sounds like, great. Story. Like your stuff sound like if, if you told me you recorded that at like Buzz Bomb or like at like a, or at like for the record or, so, or whatever, wherever, I wouldn't go, oh, wait, no, it doesn't sound like it sounds legit, like really, really good. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, at I least to me. I, I, I appreciate that a lot. I, uh, yeah. It's a work in progress, though. I mean, I, 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 you know, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of stuff to add. And I'm, I'm very fortunate that, um, like John still has a connection, so we get to go to Nam sometimes. Oh, that's right. You know, we, went, we didn't get to last year because of the pandemic. Yeah, the, the pandemic. But we went the year before the, the last year was available. It's just fun to go out and see all, all the new gear and stuff. And there's so much just great, like computers. I wish the technology was around when I was a kid because um, it's so easy to do stuff now, like and to make stuff. You know, you don't have to have a label or you don't have to have a studio. That, like, like bands out there now that just do this stuff like at home, you know what I mean? And and put the stuff out. Um, and there's so many like I'm starting to discover like newer hardcore. Like I really got into like and I don't I don't want to say that word, but I I really like metalcore, which is like a hardcore and metal. Oh, together, you like can hear it in the stuff that you're playing. That's why I was like, holy crap, yeah. he is he is kept up because I was listening, going wow, like like what you played yeah. didn't sound like a guy that had like was trying to like figure something out it sounded like very current so i was like wow that's pretty awesome uh, yeah so I, yeah because i do i mean there's a lot like like i'm so excited about a band i found like about a year ago called johnny booth and they're just they're like they're I have like a more modern hardcore band but they're just incredible like so there's still bands out there doing it that are really good and you know, they, they're like a DIY, like, you know, they still have those fundamentals, like those D, DIY fundamentals, like they just do it themselves, they put it out, they record it themselves, they do all this stuff, and it's, and it's cool, like, you know what I mean, and it's good to see that in bands out there now, and just the ability to have a computer and an interface, nothing stops you, you know what I mean, you know, there's programs for drums, like, I don't, 
I don't um, play the drums, but I can program or use whatever, you know, uh, programs I have for them. So I don't need a drummer. And I play bass and guitar on it. Like, you can do it all yourself or, you know, you can deal with the group. But it's just endless now. It's awesome. Now, this is like detective, obviously not detective because I know this, but for anyone that would do deep dives into the stuff, because I interviewed Drew, Jester, all that stuff. How do you feel, obviously, that you are the Steve from the early Smile, Deeper Than Steve song? Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I don't, to be honest with you, know much about that. I do know that supposedly that song was written about me. That's all I know. It's a great um, song. And I remember, yeah, and I, I, I didn't, I remember I was going to play with Mike in Smile, but then Aaron came back. And then I, that's all I remember on that. So, wow, you were almost in Smile. I was for a phone call. <laughs> um, but, I mean, our, our, uh, Mike was an incredible guitar player. So, that would have been, you know, I mean, just as a great experience of probably as playing with Mario would have been, you know. Um, but it's cool. I mean, Aaron obviously came back, and they had a lot of history together in playing music and stuff. And, and that band was very successful, so it was very, you know. But yeah, I, I never understood the meaning of the song, but yeah. I All I ever heard was, it may have been from Kevin Murphy, was you and Mike were talking. Apparently the talk maybe turned into an argument, and Mike started saying, oh, can't be deeper than Steve. No one can be deeper than Steve. And then that got, because the, cause the yeah. last time I talked to you about it years ago, we're, we're talking, this is like the, like you and me talking almost 30 years ago about this. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, so what do you remember about this? And you're all, I don't know. The song's called Bigger Than Steve. It's something stupid. And I was like, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna ask him any more questions about this. <laughs> until now. Until um, until uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah, who, who knows? I was probably being stupid. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> oh hey, but, what I'm whatever gonna... it is, all you guys, you, Mike. Uh, Kevin, John, John Scott, John Bruce, all you guys to me, Sterling, all of you guys, just so talented. Oh, yeah. And like, cause I, I can play the instruments, but not, but like I told you, I suck. Like, like I'm saying you guys legitimately can play those things. So I have, I have like a reverence for your ability. Like when you say that you can hear things and figure it out, I could maybe do that on like a part of a song. You could do that through the whole song. So I just, I'm like, oh man, that's awesome. It's but at, but at the end of the day, it's just a matter of having fun with doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, there's a million guys in the world that are better than me, you know? But as as long as I don't lose the fun of doing it, that's cool. I think it's part of the reason I don't, you know, put it out or whatever, because I do it and it's for me. And, you know, I don't want to hear someone else go, say, yeah, it sucks. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I'd rather just be happy with what I'm doing and kind of do it. You know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, hold but, on. But, one. But a lot of... But a lot of a lot of great memories and a lot of influences and a lot of stuff that make me who I am today come from hardcore, you know what I mean? And, and from that time period, you know what I mean? So, oh, there's, there's my lovely wife. Emma. It's okay, it's okay. No, um, um, but yeah, so, you know, and, and, and one of my longest friendships I've ever had, which was, it's crazy, was is John Bruce, you know? Um, I happened to run into him in a really kind of crazy point in my life, uh, Three years ago, three about three and a half years ago, you know, my mom had gotten really sick, and um, so did his dad, and we happened to be at the same facility. I was checking my mom into a facility, and he was coming to see his dad, who just checked into the facility. And I remember looking across the parking lot at this old Isuzu Trooper coming through, and in my head, I'm like, God, I haven't seen one of those in years. And I was looking at the guy, and then my dad and I had left. So like ten minutes later, I get a phone call and. Of John Bruce, and he's like, he's like, Manor Care, were you just there? And I was like, yeah, why? He's like, my dad's there. I was just, I was looking at you, and I thought it was you, but I didn't know. And yeah, sure enough. And then since then, like, you know, we talk to each other every week, and he comes down, and yeah, which and which crazy. Manor Care? Because that's where my father was for a bit. Uh, yeah, yes, man, in Fountain Valley. Dude, that's where he walked, like, I walked, I would literally, I was happy that he was there, because I would just walk over, you know, I, I was, I could pop in on him, like, I popped in on him, like, three times a day, just because it's, you know, yeah. would you, would you come down Harbor, yeah, and then, mm -hmm. yeah, 
because I'm at Vice Optimus Plaza. So. Right, okay. Yeah, and, and when my mom, mom got sick, she was there a couple of times, and John's dad was there too. So it was crazy, you know. How um, many years ago that's was how this? He came back in my life. About three and a half years ago, maybe. Wow, I'm saying it just—it would have been crazy. 2018. Okay, okay, because I, I was there like 2012, 2013 period, and oh, okay. I ran yeah. into a girl from elementary school, middle school, and high school when I was there. It just—it would have been crazy to run into you and John. Like, it would have made the experience a lot more enriching than than it obviously ended up being, <laughs> you know. But yeah, wow, wow, that is. Yeah, it was crazy. That was a weird phone call. That was one of the weirdest phone calls I ever got. He was like, because I was literally staring at him, but I didn't recognize him. And John was like, yeah, like, you were looking at me, but I was worried that it wasn't you. And that he was like, I thought it was some guy that wanted to kick my ass. And I was, <laughs> I was like, no, dude. But like, but like subconsciously, I, I must have known it was him or I recognized the car. But yeah, it was, 